In this video, we're going to show you the next steps on doing your Tahoe overlanding solid axle swap in your GMT 400 or OBS Chevy. If you're just now joining us, this is a step-by-step -step video series showing you how to install your Tahoe overlanding solid axle conversion kit on your full-size GM. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's one I haven't done in a while, and that's going to be how to do your track bar. The Tahoe overlanding axle swap involves you building and fabricating your track bar length and installing a track bar bracket. And this is going to show you how to do that. Uh, so it's really simple, uh, and the Tahoe Overlanding uh, Ultra Heavy Duty Track Bar, we uh, send it ready to go to be cut up and sized for your needs. Now, um, the Ultra Heavy Duty Track Bars are made out of solid 1018 pre-bent that are special bent for this application. And for the most strength, we actually send weld-on bushings for both ends. Uh, you don't need to make it adjustable. If you build it right, you'll never need to adjust it, and adjustment is just a place for failure, weakness, and future cost. So uh, I'm going to show you how to build your track bar and make it right the first time and have the strongest option for a track bar that you can possibly have. Okay, so there's the uh, axle end track bar bushing, which is the correct width of 1.60 that you need for the Dodge axle. Here's the uh, track bar bracket at the frame end side. And so this is what comes, and here is your solid 1018 cold rolled track bar builder's blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to install this in the axle and this in the track bar bracket, and then measure the distance between the two of them at ride height to determine how long we need to cut that down. So first things first, this is the track bar bracket. Now, um, they start out just tack welded together, and they don't come with this chromoly weld washer. I've added that on because that's an option you can take if you want to uh, assemble it when you're doing that. But this is what I like to do is put a chromoly weld washer on there. But this one's welded, ready to put on. So we're going to need to figure out where this track bar bracket goes. We've got it pretty well figured out. So the track bar bracket has to end up in relation to the axle. So rather than tell you where to put it on the frame, because where you decide to put your axle front to back as far as, you know, axle center line and if you want to move it forward or how far forward, that's up to you. Uh, we do recommend moving the axle forward about an inch and a half. But no matter what, no matter where the axle ends up, you need to put this bracket on the frame in a certain relation to the axle. So how you do that is once you've got your radius arms tacked together and there, so everything's in place. You see how those radius arms are there and actually holding the axle. What we're going to do is we're actually going to raise the axle all the way up. And I mean obviously I've got a little bit of a cheat. I got this axle jack that cradles the axle and I can just jack it up really easily but we're going to jack the axle. Okay it's, bot it's bottomed out. Okay so that's the axle jacked all the way upward as it's going to go as far as we can get it. Now you're going to see, here's the diff cover here on the driver's side, you see this cast on pad right there. You're going to look for this cast on pad and you're going to take your track bar bracket and we're going to mock it onto the frame where it's right See, it's mounted on the frame, so you want to mock it to where this corner and this corner are just, this, this edge is about a quarter inch further forward of that. That's where you're, you want to put your track bar bracket. There you go, right about there. You see that? So we're eyeballing up. You can see it's about a quarter inch further forward. So then you can scribe on there so you can know where to clean the rust off to weld it and get that tack welded on the frame for further test fitment. Okay, so you'll note that the Tahoe overlanding track bar bracket, different than anything else on the market, has a slope cut to the bracket. And that slope is the correct slope calculating for the slope of the frame and the slope of the radius arms to put the actual track bar swinging in uh, neutral on the right plane to keep everything working when it needs to for these Chevy frames. And I must stress, 
always tack everything, tack everything on before you full weld anything because you might have to change it. So don't full weld anything until you've got every single piece on and cycled and it all works. Whether it be track bar brackets, coil mounts, even radius arm, um, you know, weld on bungs. Don't full weld anything until everything is proven to be cycling and clearing because it's your job to cycle everything and make sure that it's working before you fully weld it because it takes a little bit of your time to make sure every little thing is in the right position and maximize the performance of this swap. It's also worth noting that see these wings here? These are larger than most wings on the aftermarket track bar brackets on the market right now. You may need to trim some of these off and grind some off depending on where you put these, you know, how far forward or back you end up putting this. You might need to go in and trim some of it off to clear something up on the frame that might be easier for you rather than having to cut everything off the inside of the frame. So that's going to depend on you and your application uh, of where it goes on if you're going to need to trim anything. 99.9% .9 of customers do not need to trim at all. All right, you can kind of see where I scribed. That's where I've got to get up in there and clean off all that rust so we can weld that track bar bracket on. see in there we got that weld in bushing just up in there with a bolt down here on the axle side same thing so now we can go to the next step So the springs are at least in. I threw some rack straps in there because there's nothing to hold them at this point. But the springs are in. Let's set it down. So I don't have the modern ABS six lug hubs installed on this axle yet. I just like to leave those off until the last minute. And so we'll try that in a minute. But right now I'm just gonna use jack stands. So if I had those hubs on, I could set it down to its own weight using wheels. But I haven't installed the brakes, I haven't done that. The new brake rotors that I'm using because I have to use the uh, GMT 800 brake rotors. I haven't gotten the new AC Delco brake rotors yet, so basically I can't even install this if I wanted to. Go over to the back side and see where it's sitting under its own weight. <gasps> also 24 and 13 16 so this is sitting perfect. Even though I have a lift, this next step has got to be done on the ground. So I've used the ratchet strap to pull the axle dead center. You can do that, use a rad strap, pull it and find it exactly dead center so it's even. I like to do this measurement here. With the axle under the vehicle under its own weight, the next step is to center the axle. So pick something that is a repeatable measurement. For example, measuring through, like I'm actually touching the tape measure on the frame to the grease zerk, let's say. So that says 12 inches exactly. So let's come over to this side and let's see what this one is. Quite a bit different. Let's see, there we go. 
11 and a quarter. So I've got to pull the axle with a ratchet strap over 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so now the axle's pulled center using that ratchet strap there. Do you see that orange ratchet strap right there? It's actually hooked onto the uh, steering stabilizer bolt over to just a part of the frame. I adjusted it so it's perfectly centered side to side. So right now that axle is at ride height up and down and centered side to side and is in place front to back. Now it's time to measure for the track bar. So even though I have a lift, this step has to be done on the ground. So let's get on the creeper. So now we're going to measure up from the, I like to measure just from the side, just the edge of the uh, bushing that's in the track bar bracket on the frame down to the edge of the bushing on the track bar bracket on the axle. So, um, those of you know, I don't normally just give a measurement because even if I say a measurement on a video, someone tries to use it and then it's wrong on their vehicle. So take that measurement that's in between the two bushings, inside edge to inside edge, and I'm gonna go cut it and kind of cope it a little bit to uh, fit against the bushings and we're gonna get that ready to go. So it's time to cut that extra long track bar blank that uh, Tahoe Overlanding sends with the kit down and we're gonna actually get it ready to kind of get in place here. The track bar blank trimmed down to the right length to fit between the two bushings with the axle centered. But you have to tack weld this track bar blank in under its own weight on the ground. You can't measure and then try to weld it on the bench. It just, it doesn't work. And that's because the two bushings at either end aren't on a true, you know, parallel plane with each other because of the, you know, the radius arm shape and the caster of the axle. So you can't do it on a bench. You have to tack weld it in the vehicle and you can't full weld it either because if you full weld it, it's going to melt the polyurethane. So you have to tack weld it and then remove it, take the polyurethane bushing halves out, full weld it, wait for it to cool, paint it, and put the bushings back in. Be sure to check out the next video in the series to see the next step. We're going to go through this step by step and show you every step you need to do.